something which is very common for a lot of people who are on their journey of spiritual awakening is that over time they tend to find themselves increasingly more and more alone. As you take up an interest in spirituality, you tend to lose interest in most things trivial and superficial. Or it may be the other way around. It may be that your interest in spirituality is initiated by your loss of interest in everything else. It may be your disillusionment with materialistic pursuits and the like that compels you to seek after something greater, something more meaningful. But the majority of people in society seem only interested in these trivial and superficial things, and so as a result, you find yourself more and more disconnected from that society, even from friends and family who don't seem to understand or have interest in spirituality. So it's a very common thing when you take up that interest to find yourself very much alone. And as you go further into this, it may be that even after many years, you still find yourself very much alone, that you don't have a lot of people in your life or any at all who you can really connect with at that same level of interest and understanding. I found that on my own journey, the further I go, the deeper I go, the less people I know who I can really relate to at that level. As I said before, most people are primarily interested in superficial things, and most people live only at the surface. They don't go very deep into themselves, and so their understanding and experience can also be very shallow. Naturally, we want to connect with others, we want to relate, but the deeper that we go on this journey, the more we want to connect and relate with others at that deeper level. We're not satisfied with small talk, we're not interested in the latest celebrity gossip or whatever nonsense is the talking point of the day. And it may be that our interest in spirituality is what most occupies our minds, it's what we're inspired and excited about. And we'd like to talk about it, especially when it's very new to us. We'd like to share what we've been learning and hear from others what they have learned, to find support and encouragement in this new way of life. And if you've tried to talk about these things with just anyone, you might find that most people are either adverse to hearing it, or they're disinterested, or they just don't seem to understand it at all. And one can often feel alienated, isolated, alone in the world, and that can feel quite lonely. And the thing about loneliness is that you don't have to be alone to feel lonely. Oftentimes, I would feel the most lonely when I was out in the world, perhaps at some social event, finding it challenging to deeply connect with others. Because loneliness is really less about being alone and more about a lack of connection. And so there are many people who will find themselves alone on this spiritual journey. And initially, this can be very unsettling. Naturally, we want to connect with others. Naturally, we want to engage with others. We want to share and learn and support and to be supported and so on. And yet we may find that the more deeply we go along into this journey, the more disconnected we seem to become in regard to those around us. To be alone on one's journey is not only very common, in some sense, it's actually intrinsic. And what I mean is that your journey is yours and yours alone. It's an inward journey, and the entire thing takes place within. And no one can join you in that, even if you find yourself surrounded with others who are on a similar journey, ultimately your journey is your journey, and their journey is their journey. On the material level, on the external surface, you can share your insights and realizations with one another. You can share knowledge and ideas. You can support and encourage one another and so on. But those realizations themselves do not come from outside of you. All of that takes place within. And within yourself, you are alone. Whatever progress you make, whatever depth you reach, whatever discovery you find, that's entirely on you. No one can do any of that for you. No one can see for you. No one can give you realization. No one can make you aware. 
So in this sense, you are very much on your own. Accept it, embrace it, surrender to it. Notice whatever resistance you might have to all of this. Notice if there is some desperate need to escape it. Notice whatever sense of loneliness you might be experiencing. Notice all of it, confront it, accept it, observe it. This is all a part of the process. Wherever there is any discomfort, any anxiety, any fear, there is some profound lesson to be learned, and it's solely up to you to see this for yourself, to make use of it, to grow from it. You may find that in as far as your spiritual journey is concerned, you are always alone, even outwardly. You might never meet any like-minded people who share in that interest. And this is something that just needs to be accepted. Accept that possibility. Learn to be at peace with it. Because even if you do find such people, it's not guaranteed to help you in any way. It may, but it may also inhibit you. It may distract you from yourself. But if you can find peace in being alone, then what can disturb you? What can distract you? What can inhibit you? If you can find peace within you, it won't matter to you whether or not you're alone. If you find value in this content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe.